But let's get oh. to this call that prompted you to ask me to make this phone call because uh, in the last 24 hours, the last 48 hours, I guess Carol was contacted by some junior attorney at uh, J.P. Morgan because she's been so public about not giving in even though they illegally sold her house on an auction. Um, they called her yesterday and said J.P. Morgan wants to walk away and uh, just pretended like they were just going to be nice and let it go. Carol basically countered them and said, you're going to pay me for my time. And then when that happened, after that happened, she got a very frightening phone call. And it, so she called the number back to see who it was. It turns out it was the ATF. So this is how J.P. Morgan works. Uh, Carol, do you want to play that phone call for the listeners? Yes. Um, Peter Cummins uh of Foster and Todd, I forget the third name on the attorney's uh, firm that called me yesterday wanting to get me to walk away, or them to walk away. But here is the phone call that I received from ATF yesterday, which was documented because I was on the phone at the time and I just turned my camera on. Uh, so here goes. Hello? Hello? What? Okay, that's it. I hope that comes through the phone. Yeah, that was uh, really that was creepy. Get that's out, like a get out. That's a stalking yeah. video. And so what did you do when you got that phone call? Uh well I laughed at the end of it, thinking how ironic and every time that I received the call within about forty minutes or thereabout after their attorney called me wanting to settle and just walk away, wanted me to sign a document saying I wouldn't say anything about it, but I wasn't going to upload that video until I got this phone call here because I, I am concerned about my safety and well-being. You know what? They stoop so low and, and get people like that to call and harass somebody totally disabled, homebound. I'm in siege day 13. For fear of leaving my house, uh, uh, that the sheriff's department or somebody go come down here and steal my house and take all my property. Yeah, so when you got that creepy phone call, what did you do? Uh, I uploaded well, this off YouTube, but uh, if something happens to me, I mean, if they take my channel down or something, nobody's going to know what happened to me. And that's why... Well, how do you know Carol. it was... But, uh, Carol, let me get to this. This is what I'm trying to draw out of you, frankly. How do you know that that was the ATF? How do you recognize? Because whoever it was called you and just said, get out, get out. They didn't say, we're the ATF threatening you. Well, I recorded the phone number uh, as they called in on my other phone. I was sitting there talking. Someone on my other phone that witnessed both the attorney calling, then this call came in on get out, get out, and I had my camera on and I recorded the phone number and the call as it was occurring. And then I ended up redialing the number after she had called them, asking them, Is this what y'all do? At the oh, your friend. Call people to harass them. You know, for the benefit of uh, J.P. Morgan. That was not a spoof call. Somebody knew somebody to have them call me from that number. Right. This is the long arm of intimidation. Just this is exactly right. what happens. Like exactly what happened. Like when I got investigated by the Capitol Police, when I called up Mike Pence's office, they called up the Capitol Police and said I threatened to murder their staff. So the Capitol Police investigated me falsely for slander because they know oh. I did not have the resources to go after them for slander. And so what they were trying to do with you was intimidate you to make you back off from demanding money from J.P. Morgan for harassing you for 12 years. They were, right. you know, they were right. trying to intimidate you because they felt like they were doing you a favor, giving you your house back. How kind of them after exactly. they've done nothing but harass you for 12 years. They fraudulently got the house. They ended up paying a four hundred and eighty three dollar fifty two cent tax bill back in March of twenty thirteen or thereabout. They ended up getting a tax lien, which I just found out about a week and 
two days ago, something like that, that it was a tax lien that they foreclosed on me. Their case against me in 2012, had, or, or in 2012, had been dismissed. So they had to come at me again because the case had not been dismissed with prejudice. So they came back at me again, so they created the false uh, documents with the help of uh, Rebecca Sebel, which is an order, but she works for PNC Bank. However, her CEO, William Demchek, used to work for J.P. Morgan Chase in the mortgage department. Well, you so, know what this is know, all about. A bank, one bank helping another bank out, you know, with fraudulent documentation. Look, this is about them picking on a disabled woman. That's what this is about. They decided they singled you out of your neighborhood to pick you out out of a, all your people in the neighborhood because they figured you were just some disabled woman who didn't know how to fight back. And when they found out they you didn't know how to fight back and you've been going public on it, when they finally offered you to leave you alone and you want compensation, they get their goons to call the ATF to threaten you. And that this is this is how the collusion of the government works. This also stems out from Joseph Castle and the judge. It was on both cases that involved me, the house and the guy that stole my money when I purchased a pool liner that still has my money, over four thousand dollars of my money. His name is Aaron. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> His name is Aaron Hicks of Aquascapes Pools and Spas. And his attorney, <laughs> Matthew Tierney, happens to be the clerk, Susan Tierney's son. So because I knew the laws when I went in that case, that attorney did not represent his client, right, because he did it. Uh, answer to the complaint, whereby under civil rule, he only had 20 days. He didn't respond until 65 days later. Yeah, but you know so what I this really... for a default judgment, and the judge denied me. Well... But because I knew the laws, the same judge ended up giving my house to the bank. Well, look... at one point, the bank did not show up in court. I moved for a summary judgment, and the judge denied me there. So it's so, all conspiracy. Mm -hmm. It all has to do with fraud, and it all has to do with him being biased against me. Right. Well, look, you live in Kentucky, which is a pretty corrupt state at the political level. But let me ask you this. Have you looked into, because, you know, public finance of uh, elections and campaigns is public knowledge. So we need we have a right to know who contributes to the funds of publicly elected officials of which this judge is a publicly elected official, correct? So yes. have you looked into who has funded him? Do you know if J.P. Morgan gave him a big fat check? Well, no, I don't. I have not, but I do know this, that all the judges, uh, I come across a story years ago, that judges in this country receive um, money off the EBT cards, the food stamp cards, <laughs> what? And J.P. Morgan Chase ends up loading those cards. <laughs> so wow. he's getting a kickback off the EBT cards. That makes him absolutely biased against me. Wow. wow. Well, I did not know that. Well, I think what we need to do is look into who's funding this guy. But let's talk about, we'll end up shortly. We don't want to make this too long of a video. But let's talk about why you you called me up and asked me to make a video for you and record this on my channel. Because yeah. play this video well, again. And let's be very quiet so we can hear it. So play the video again. And let's give it five seconds after it stops so people can let this absorb in. Play the video really quickly again. Okay. Hello? Hello? What? Did you hear that? Yes, that let me, puts... Let me play it again. Okay. I'll play it again. Hold up. Okay. Hello? What? 
That sends shivers up my spine. I am telling you what, that is scary. And as it turns out, Carol was on the phone. Uh, she has two phone lines because she's an advocate for disabled people. So she was on the other, her home personal line when this call came in on this other line. So she actually had her girlfriend on the phone while this, and she put it on speakerphone. So her girlfriend heard this phone call. And so her girlfriend called the phone number that Carol gave her. And as it turns out, that's how they found out it was the ATF. So then Carol called also. but And of which the ATF summarily denied doing anything. They all said, no, 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 that wasn't us. Of course, they're not going to call up and say, yes, we're harassing a disabled woman for Chase yeah, J.P. Morgan. They're not going to do that. I'm sorry, Chase, but to so J.P. Morgan. But the reason that we're making this video is because of the threat. This is a that that type of a phone call. Frankly, Carol, I really think you should file a police report because that is a subtle threat against you. And I really believe that you should file a police report so it's on record in case your house starts getting vandalized, so that you can put this all into writing on a, in a you know with the courthouse. With the police department, I, I think you really actually ought to because I find this is why we're doing kind of this impromptu thing. Neither one of us are big techie people. So I basically have my cell phone underneath my laptop so we can hear Carol talk and I'm videotaping it because this is how the intimidation, because Carol refuses to be intimidated by J.P. Morgan, they are threatening her livelihood and threatening her life nonstop, even to this day. They agree to leave her house alone, and when she tells them she wants compensation for the harassment, they go straight to the ATF and have somebody there send her this threatening phone call. And unfortunately for them, she had her friend on the phone who heard everything. So the, the cat is out of the bag on the collusion of how it's working in Owensboro, Kentucky, which is where Carol's at. So, uh, Carol, is, well, there any, is there anything else Lonnie, you want to say? Lonnie? Yes. I can't call the police department. They sent the police department down here on fictitious wellness checks. You know, I've had police dogs down here in their units. They haven't brought the dog out, but they're down here pounding on my door to see if I'm alive. Really? I don't need them coming down here. I, I don't want anything to do with the police department. So again, no, we're, we're another we're form, right. it's another form of intimidation. Yes, it is. That's really what it's about. Is they, they have basically left you without representation, without protection from the sheriff's department, and now your life is being threatened by the ATF because you yeah. want your house back from them having illegally stolen it from you. Right. Wow. So that's why I wanted you to do a video in case somehow, you know, the powers that be take down my YouTube channel and nobody will know what happened to Carol. Okay, well, look, Carol, we'll end this video. We're into 15 minutes. Let, let me say one last thing. Okay. I'm also, most of my stuff, because I'm hammered on the Weepy World 2 and is limited to 15 minutes, I'm also Weeping Space Willow 2. Space number four and a capital U. That's where the majority now of my J.P. Morgan Chase um, videos are at. But oh. the history of it all is on Weeping Willow Two. Okay, so the Weeping Willow Two for you is where all the videos are. Yeah, uh, the the recent ones, the ones I've dealt with since probably August. Right. The present. Because I had to go to that because YouTube gave me a strike on my weeping world too. Oh, uh, I see. So, so you, I, I've limited the fifteen minutes that I can't. Yeah, but do you know what, Carol? I, videos I, on JP Morgan. I follow you on Weeping Willow, too, and I get all your videos. I have been following it, so they mirror onto that website, onto that, onto that YouTube channel. So, yeah, but I can't upload some of the stuff right. that I'm doing now. So I will too. look. I'll post both sites in the notes on this, and I'm going to post this up. And really, this is about us sticking together. This is about yeah, us yeah, uniting, yeah. and that's what this is what we have to do. We have to unite against these elitists and these corporate dogs who are willing to go out and attack their neighbors for no reason at all because some one of their bosses tells them to go harass a, a disabled woman who has nobody in her life to protect her from them. The bank came after her because she was disabled, because she tries to stick up.
up for her rights. And when she finally wins, they're still going after her. So this is why I agreed to put this video up, because honestly, it is time for us to fight back. And the only way we can fight back is with our words and with public exposure to their collusion and corruption, because they have all the weapons. I mean, they have exactly. everything that they need. People don't stand up. I mean, you're going to be the next one they're going to come after because this is absolute fraud and coercion. What they've done to me, they had no legal standing to do what they're doing to me. And you're next, folks. Right. You're next. Either stand up for your neighbor or they're coming for you next. Well, the only reason they've decided to walk away from Carol's house is because of YouTube. Because Carol has been very public and very adamant and going after them and making a public spectacle of their practices. That they imagine the millions of people in this country that are suffering at the hands of these people who do not have the courage or the wherewithal that Carol's had to stand up to these people. So hopefully this scenario will kind of be a lesson to people that it is important to stand up and we can win and we can, good does override the rule of, rule, uh, of evil. You know, we can actually stand up to these people. Well, honey, if it had not been for the fall in my face, I would never have this far. It's been by his grace and his grace alone because I've been doing this by myself. For 12 years. I know. I know. Fighting this corruption, exposing the corruption and the injustice that, you know, I don't believe even exists in our court systems any longer. Right. Well, look, Carol, let's let let's end here and I will talk with you soon. I really appreciate your time and thank you for uh, honoring me with the ability to just help you get the word out. I'll upload this video probably tonight after work and then uh, okay. well, hopefully this so will give you some cover. And I'll put it on Creative Commons and that way you can actually mirror it. You can make a copy of it on your on your on your uh, website if you want. Okay. 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 That'd be great. Okay, Thank great. Thank you so much, Lonnie. Thank you so much, Carol, and uh, we'll talk with you soon.